American way And we built this country called the USA And we fly our flag cause we're proud and free We're Americans Red, white, and blue is our way of life We never back down from a challenge or a fight Nature provides, God gives the rights We're Americans We make up America It's amazing America Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sergeant Frank Show. My co-host, the Bird Dog, and I want to introduce John Kalish of a Hero for Kids Foundation. And this week, we're going to talk about how his, how his organization was formed and all the work that they do in their community. So, John, tell me how, how this all started. All right, Sarge. So back about uh, four and a half years ago, uh, I was, before I just recently retired, I was a director with a large nonprofit here in Central Florida. And uh, one of the departments that I really embraced and enjoyed was the bookworks, where donated books were distributed to local schools, local children. And one day we were out with WFTV here in Orlando, giving books, donating books to a school. And we got to talking with uh, one of the folks from the TV station. And I said, you know what, it'd, it'd just be cool to get out there, do some more of this in person with these kids. And I, and I bet you that if like a superhero or a character or something took a book to these schools or took books to these schools and and gave them to the kids that it it would be a hit and uh, Jamie Holmes who is one of the anchors on WFTV loved the idea a couple of weeks later we went into three local elementary schools I was dressed as Batman and 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 I got to tell you it was the cheesiest Batman costume you could possibly own I think it was like 38 bucks off of Amazon and uh, I went out there and the kids absolutely loved it. And, and I just said, you know what, this is, this is something that'll work. And, and literacy, I've always been big about, about kids and reading and, and volunteering. So it just, it just grew from there and uh, I created a, a, my own nonprofit, a hero for kids. And we, we've just started distributing books, and then we've partnered up with law enforcement agencies and, and school districts, and it's, it's just grown. So why would you pick Batman? I, you know what? And, and <laughs> honest with you, I'm, I'm looking at Amazon, and that was the uh, two extra large uh, <laughs> suit that they had. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot five, so I couldn't be the penguin, uh, uh, you know, something <laughs> along there so i look and here's a 2x batman suit and and i'll be quite honest with you up until about a year ago i hadn't watched a lot of the batman movies but but that it was just i guess luck of the draw you know fortunately it wasn't the hulk or or anything like that because i'd have had to hit the gym a bit more to to work on that persona i don't know john you're a pretty big dude man i can tell you you stay in really good shape and you know, there's, there's something very similar about Batman and law enforcement officers because we all wear our, our utility belts together. So whether it's a police duty belt or the Batman utility belt, we both have to put that gear on every day when we go out to fight crime. Yeah, and, and I tell you, and, and the whole Batman thing, I, and, and I don't know, I'm not a, a big thing about, you know, the universe does this or the universe does that. But I tell you what, the Batman thing is, has just been embraced by, by not only the children, but the, the first responders that we work with and the schools that we work with. I mean, I've got a little challenge with the, the, between the chiefs of police and the, the sheriffs, the show me your muscles thing. If you'll notice in a, in a lot of the pictures, a number of the pictures, I get the kids, you know, it, it, it gives them a little sense of power. Show me your muscles. And, and I bring, and I've got the uh, the chiefs and the sheriffs kind of competing against each other, where uh, at the events that they're attending with us or we're attending with them, I've got them taking a picture with Batman showing their muscles. So, 
you know, the, the whole Batman, the fighting crime fit in well. You know, of course, we work with fire departments also. The uh, the guys that I like call second responders, you know, because the police <laughs> come and they're the, you know, I like that. It, yeah, it's the, you know, you come and get the scene secured by the police and here come the firemen. So they're, they're there second. But it's a, it's a good running battle that I've got between all the agencies. I think that's great. You know, we uh, we actually uh, we're working on a challenge as well for our law enforcement leaderships to have more officers and deputies getting into the schools just like you are and mentoring our kids. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing that we have kind of the same mindset. And I knew when we met you, you were very much a different type of uh, superhero that we haven't met before. So, you know, from that very cold uh, Jacksonville morning, I, I'm pretty excited about where we're going together with our two organizations. Yeah, I was going to say I am too, you know, and, and I met you guys up there. And, and of course, like you say, it was the first time I met you. And, and you can tell folks that, that have a passion for what they're doing. I mean, it, it's, it's something that, that takes drive and determination. I mean, there's, and, and I know you've done it too, and you guys have done it also where you've had back to back events where you, you get a little bit of a break and you roll right into the next one. And, and I've had weeks where I've done events on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday comes around and I feel like I've been beat with a baseball bat. But in the end, it, it's just, you know, it, it's all about the kids and the first responders and, and getting those kids to understand that although I am dressed as Batman and they call me a superhero, I always get the, the officers or the deputies or the firefighters to get in as many pictures with the kids as I can. And I say, you know, here's the real superhero. And uh, we're going to take a picture with the real superhero. And, and they get it. You know, the, the, little, the older ones will, will get what I'm saying and understand where I'm coming from. So the costume that you have looks pretty real. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, did you have that made for yourself, or how'd that come about? Yeah, those are those are custom made. There there are uh, uh, cosplay companies that you know you send your measurements to, and they will they'll make you a costume that is is made to fit. I mean, the one that I have now compared to the one from four years ago is night and day. Uh, the one I've got now is uh, screen accurate. I mean, you could, you could almost roll into Hollywood and, and shoot some Batman scenes and, and folks wouldn't know the difference between the one that was made for, uh, you know, for the movie and the one that I'm out there wearing. And uh, I've got a, a couple of lightweight versions that I put together for the five K's that we do because in the, uh, the 5Ks, the walks for uh, certain charities or organizations, I'll do the walk. I'll do that 3.1 miles. I'm not running because, you know, like I tell everybody, if you see me running, try and keep up because something's trying to kill me. So <laughs> I do it. I walk it. But still, that, that three plus miles in any costume is is challenging. But I've got a one that just has a, a lightweight skin on it and and it works out real well because I'll wear the event t-shirt over it so you can't tell that it's not a uh, super cool Batman outfit. Well, it looks awesome. I really loved the costume that you had and you know what makes it like fit is the fact that you're six foot five because when you you think of a superhero to be this big monstrous guy, when we met you, I was like, man, that guy's huge. He's tall, you know, so... <laughs> it just it just made the costume so much better, I think, personally, because you're very tall, too. So when these kids get to see you in person, they're like, oh, my goodness, he's huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get I, if at an event, if I don't hear that 10 times or get asked, you know, how tall are you? Is Are you really that tall or is it the boots? Are you, you know, and, <laughs> are you on and, stilts or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Because they're, they're looking at the boots to see if. You know, it's the boots making you this tall, or are you really six five? So, so it that? is. Uh, like it, Sorry, yeah. what's that thing made out of? It is a. It's rubber with a, a puff painting on it that gives it the texture. 
Uh, that's the outer part. And then underneath that is a muscle suit that gives it the, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't have that six pack that you see in those pictures. Uh, uh, I have, I have more like a keg going on, so, <laughs> but they, you know, that gives it the, the, you know, the, the definition, the muscular definition and everything. Oh, we may have to talk to the law dog maker about that idea. Uh, John, you, you were telling me, I think at the event at St. Cloud that you have a history from the military. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm an army veteran. I was in the infantry. Uh, I had, did, I was a, a year in the honor guard and I also was an instructor at the NCO Academy, uh, helping to train, you know, younger NCOs, non-commissioned officers and, uh, you know, getting, getting out of that and, and then getting into, and, and almost rolled right into a volunteer role. When I, when I got out of the military, I kind of just started with the police athletic league with kids and basketball and, and just, you know, that, that sense of belonging that, so I, I started, you know, hanging out with the, with the officers at the police athletic league and, and seeing their challenges because, you know, when I got out of the service, we didn't understand what we were missing, you know, and, and it took them 40, you know, plus years to figure out that uh, soldiers and, and sailors, Marines, airmen getting out of the, the military, are, are, they, they initially miss that sense of mission, that sense of purpose, and that sense of belonging. And uh, I'm also a member of the Mission Continues, which is a nationwide veterans group. And we mentor these younger veterans and give them these, you know, they'll volunteer with my organization, giving out books at events. And, and we go out and lay sod at, at uh, Homes for Heroes. We help there. And, and just uh, this past weekend, we built a ramp, helped build a ramp at a veteran's house, a disabled veteran, so that he could have a wheelchair ramp. So, uh, you know, I just get into that, that volunteer mode, and I've just never got out of it. And, and now having, you know, quote, retired, I retired on February 3rd, and, uh, of course, I'm busier now than I was when I was working, but it's a good busy. Funny how that happens. That's right. Yeah, that's that's yeah, Danny and I can definitely understand that. But that's really fantastic uh, with all the efforts that you're doing, especially for the military. And uh, we were throwing around some ideas for our, our retired police officers as well, because once you leave that job, you know, that's in a lot of us, that's our identity. And you no longer have that. It's it's kind of a lost feeling, just like you're saying. And I think a lot of military and, and, and first responders are dealing with their own PTSD it's different for our domestic warriors than it is for our military because it takes a lot longer. I think a lot, a lot over the years, all the things that we absorb, you know, all the stuff that we see out there, but it's still the same result. We're still dealing with these stressors. And I think it's a big problem that we need to address in our country. You know, at least the V I know everybody talks bad about the VA, but at least you have the VA uh, law enforcement. We don't have anything. So and it's a cumulative effect is what it is. And, and they're studying that and starting to understand that, you know, maybe, maybe it's not one incident or two incidents or, you know, over a 20 year career, as you both I'm sure can attest to, it's a hundred different incidents, you know, and, and that all adds up. And, and whether you're a, a police officer, a, a soldier, a firefighter, a, you know, that, that PTSD is real and, and folks, you know, just don't get, don't understand that it's, it's not, again, it's not one incident. One incident may bother you, but there's, there's 50 incidents in your back of your mind that you're not, you know, concentrating on that are still there. And, and I agree, you know, I started to, to see, you know, there was a seminar just, I think it was yesterday that KPD, the Kissimmee Police Department, Kissimmee Fire Department, were a part of the leadership there on PTSD. And, you know, it, it's something that, that needs to be addressed. And, and you're right, folks talk bad about the VA because the VA gets a bad rap, uh, rap uh, because, you know, there, there is some 
a lot that's that's left and uh you know you have to fight for benefits and you know we've got some young soldiers with five six combat deployments uh, which you know equals almost four and a half years in combat and uh, they you, all you have to do is sit and talk to them and and see it and and you know, a, a local firefighter here that I know very well uh, suffers from PTSD. And again, they, they, you know, you have to fight for things and there needs to be something done. So with that, and we know all, all of us in the nonprofit world know there always comes that one question, where does the funding come for all the stuff that you do every day of the week? Well, mine, you know what? This has been self-funded for, for since I started it. I bought all the costumes. I, I pay for, you know, the expenses that, that we entail. We get, we get some donations. We're, we're starting to do a, a little bit of fundraisers. We do a bingo night uh, where the proceeds come to us, and we've had a couple of uh, uh, – alcohol related events where we've pulled the uh permit and and then got the the funds from that you know but truly i'm i'm working on like i say self-funding this and and have self-funded it from the inception with the exception of uh some donations but you know the donations that we've really focused on has been like school supplies and backpacks for our back to school drives and, and toys during our Christmas drives for the kids and food and, and meals for uh, families during the holidays that we get donated from restaurants and, and Publix is a big supporter. And so is save a lot. So, you know, at, at this time, I, and I would say going forward, I'll probably have to identify things like like grants that are out there and that. But again, I'm having just retired February 3rd and didn't really have a lot of time to focus on. You know, I was focusing more on getting out there and, and getting things done than worried about where the money was going to come from. So it's all been personal funds. So if somebody wanted to make a donation, how would they do that, John? Well, we've got a we've got a website. It's uh, a heroforkids.org, and there's a link there that that you can make a donation on. There also the uh, Facebook page. There's a, a donate button that goes to us, and you know, uh, and I can assure you, every every penny of donations goes back to our mission because nobody in our organization, we're all volunteer, me included. And nobody takes any any money for anything. It goes right to what we're doing, be it school supplies, uh, meals, uh, gift cards for for homeless, uh, anything along those lines. Very very cool. So if you guys want to make a donation, please check out a hero for kids foundation dot org and contribute to an amazing organization ran by an amazing American, an Army veteran, who's out there doing his part to put the United back in the United States. Bird Dog, what else would you like to ask? I have a question about the Facebook uh, donations. Have you received a lot of uh, donations on Facebook? You know, I think in, in since I put, in, and a friend of mine had me put up the the donate button on Facebook, and I think we probably got $150 in the few months that that donate button has been up there. So it works. Uh, and well, that, that, uh, was, that was more my question. Like we seem to get things like three or four months later. Is that the same with y'all? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, and, and again, like I say, I know I'll get like a email that has, you know, you received a $20 donation and it is, it's slow to get it. And I don't know what their parameters are or, or how it works for sure. And I guess I probably look into it. It's just, I, you know, it, there's not enough flowing in that it had become an issue with us. Yeah. Network for good is the entity for Facebook and they take all the donations in but they only send the checks about every quarter. So it's about every 90 days before they distribute those. But to really make, to, to help that organization get the funding faster, 
you're better off going to their website and donating directly and just i mean they always they always deliver but it's a lot faster and a lot of these organizations are living you know from month to month so the sooner you can get their donations to them the better it all better it is for that organization especially for a, a new organization like john's how long have you guys been around john did you say well, it's it's been I've been doing this for over four years now, about four and a half years. I started really just, you know, focusing on on building this and and getting the connections out in the community. Uh, we got our 501c3 status in July of 2018. So uh, that that's when I guess we became official and and people kept pushing that I get that done. So I, I got it now. Now we have it in the pocket and we're, we're, I actually have a letter in with the uh, Osceola County school district, hoping to get a school bus donated. I know Frank, I talked to you about this when you were up here, right? I envisioned getting that school bus and, and gutting it and turning it into a, a mobile literacy unit so we could get out and do more events and, and, uh, reach more children very cool very cool and now we talked about a tumbler too and i'm i'm right. diligently working uh all kind of different angles and eventually we will we will hit on all cylinders and uh provide you know hopefully one of those contacts somewhere will come through for us and help us out for what we're trying to do for our children of this country yeah yeah we gotta we gotta get the kids early i know we talked about this frank that that you got to get them early. If, if number one, if a child isn't embracing reading by the by the third grade, their odds of graduating just diminish immensely. They're not, you know, they're they don't they start falling behind in school, becoming disinterested, and we all know what happens when a child, you know, just isn't interested in education and starts running the street, and they get a little bit older. And uh, and they find things that aren't so nice to do out there, and uh, we just gotta we just gotta catch them young, you know, get them in the the kindergarten, the first, the second, the third grade, get them to understand that that law enforcement is is their friend, you know, and and the parents that are, you know, I I always you hear parents say it, and it makes me cringe when they say, you know, you do that, I'm gonna. I'm going to tell that policeman what you did and he's going to, you know, he's going to do bad things to you. And, and, you know, we got to get these kids to understand that, that the, the law is there for you. And, you know, as long as you're doing the right thing, you have not a problem in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we've made a big point of that when I was in uniform working the road. And when I heard a parent say that, I, I would pull the parent off to the side and say, listen, you know, that's, that's really a dangerous thing that you're doing there because when your child becomes lost, you know, they're going to hide from us when we're looking for them. And the people that find them are not good people. And you're going to wish that the police officer found your child instead of somebody that that's going to do harm to them. So, you know, and after, and I probably did that a thousand times and nobody ever made a complaint about me saying that to the parent. So I think they kind of got it that we were there to help and to stop doing foolish things like that because we are a team and organizations like yourself and Adopt the Cop USA, you know, and the way we met, um, I believe, was another awesome organization called Team South Florida with Rich Best and his team down um, down in Broward County. So I want to give a little shout out to Team South Florida because if it weren't for them, we never would have been at that event and we never would have met a hero a hero for kids foundation and john uh and all the things that you do in, in your area and i know you go are you primarily just in orlando because i know you do travel around quite a bit oh yeah well you know central florida obviously is our is our home base but you know like like we did up in jacksonville there and like we're ready to, to do with you in a, a couple of months with uh your amazing initiative up there with the bikes and the, the uh, uh, scholarship challenge. And, and we, you know, I'll travel. I mean, that's, that's the thing. If it's, if it's something where we can positively impact somebody or, or a bunch of somebody's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll absolutely go anywhere, literally go anywhere. 
Well, we're real excited about you joining us for that event. And it's funny that, you know, I didn't realize that you guys did so much with literacy. And uh, that's one of our big pushes is to get more kids out there reading. And that's why the bird dog really kind of wrapped the uh, his arms around the whole reading for the bicycle uh, challenge because we wanted more of our kids to, you know, we don't want to be a welfare system. We want our kids to earn what they what they get, you know, as adults too. So if we instill those at an early age, I think it would our country would be way better off. Oh, there there's no doubt about it. You know, you get the the children to embrace reading, embrace education, and you know, and I'm sure in in both of your years in law enforcement, it it wasn't the the college degree you know professionals that were taking the ride down to the down in the back seat of that car it was you know it was the kids that that had started getting in trouble younger and thing you know one thing led to another and then next thing you know they're getting locked up so i think it education is the great equalizer i don't you know I don't care whether you, you what you grow up with or or you know you can't blame your environment because there's kids that that grew up dirt poor and I was one of those kids that grew up dirt dirt poor you know we we didn't have a lot growing up but you know you you take advantage of the opportunities out there and and you make an effort and you can you know, you can succeed. There's there's thousands and thousands of success stories out there of of kids that have grown up uh, in in bad neighborhoods, poor households that that did something right. You know, and and every time you look at that, it was education, and uh, that like they say, education is a great equalizer, and literacy leads to ed- education. So how good can you move around in that uniform? Can you play basketball? No, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I uh, I haven't I haven't done any basketball in it. I played a little uh, soccer with the kids at the uh, at a community event with the Orange County Sheriff's Office yesterday, and uh, you know it's just the heat and the 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 thing. But yeah, what uh, about like a free throw I, I mean, challenge or something? Yeah, I think I could. I think I could pull that off. Okay, because we were well. We were well, the main thing with the Hudson event was we wanted you to uh, challenge the sheriff, but uh, I think that he had prior engagements, so he's not going to be able to be there. So we're going to have to find uh, some uh, some other uh, unsuspecting <laughs> Pasco County sheriff. Who deputy. will it be? I wonder. <laughs> or it could be the law dog. Who knows? You know. <laughs> I don't know if the law dog's up for the challenge or not. Well, the problem is the law dog is not six foot five <laughs> in or out of his costume. So we'll we'll have to see how many dog biscuits it's going to take to uh, to pull it off. But I I'm pretty sure the, the the community will be very entertained. But we have a lot of cool stuff planned. We met uh, not too long ago with the officials there, and I have to tell you, it's it's really coming together nicely to see people that are just you know, I think our country is really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I think what you said was really important, John, about people's past. And when I used to run the Explorer program, I used to tell my kids, don't let your past poison your future. You can change your destiny. You know, you have today. Forget tomorrow. You know, whatever you do today to make, you know, move yourself forward and really how can you help some other people? And that's the goal of our program. And I know it's the goal of your program is how many kids can we help? How many adults can we bring to, you know, to, to serve our, our communities, to help serve our country and stop and get off this crazy train of I'm entitled to something. You're not, you're not entitled to anything. You're born. That was a miracle of birth. All right. Now what you do with it is what, you know, that's on your plate. That's on your shoulders. Stop. Stop blaming everybody in the world about whatever and get off your tail and go out there and do something for somebody else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, and and it was interesting. I I had somebody tell me one time that there's actually uh, 30,000 nonprofits registered in the central Florida area. And I said, my goodness, with that many nonprofits, you would. Yeah. Isn't that insane? That is. You would think that that there wouldn't be there would be no problems in the central florida area 
I mean, if each one of them did did 10 hours a week and back to the community, I, I just, I'm just blown away. And, and I think, unfortunately, you know, in, in the nonprofit world, you got some, some issues and, and we've all heard about the issues in the past, but, you know, if you can get folks, you know, just give up an hour, you know, you got relay, we've got relay for life coming up in a, in a month or so. And, and if everybody in this town gave up an hour for relay for life, imagine what we could do. And it's just, it, it becomes disheartening sometimes when you, like you say, that whole entitlement thing, you're absolutely right. You know, get out there and work for it and then give back, you know, you, you can, it, it's so easy. I've had folks ask me, well, what can I do? I say, just get in your car and drive up the road and, and look around, you know, take the blinders off and look around and see the, the homeless veterans and the, the kids out and, and everything that's going on. And, and you'll, you'll find something where you can give back and where you can help. It's, it's not that hard to find. Now, John, do you guys have positions for volunteers in your organization that can help you guys out? We do. And, and what we do is, is at the events, uh, I've actually got a uh, lady Shirley, who is a radio personality in Kissimmee at one of the Spanish radio stations there, and she's dressing up as Batgirl now. I've got a retired gentleman that uh, dresses up as the Joker. I think you met him, Frank, Steve. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome gentleman. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got uh, a gentleman, Jesse Neal, who's actually a professional wrestler, uh, who uh, w is a Navy veteran. He was on the USS Cole when it was attacked, and he lost wow. his best friend in that attack. And uh, he looks literally just like the guy that plays Aquaman. So I have ordered Jesse an Aquaman uh, costume, and he's going to be our Aquaman, and he's going to volunteer with us. But, you know, anybody that, that's looking for something and, and wants to give back, we certainly would – we love volunteers at our events. They help us give out the books. They help us distribute our cards and information about our organization and uh, just, just got volunteer opportunities when we're, when we're out there doing the work. You know, the physical work, laying sod or building a ramp for a veteran or, or helping to clean up a, a house for, for somebody that, you know, maybe they can't mow the lawn anymore or fix the fence. Uh, we, we absolutely have opportunities. So if they wanted to reach out to you, they could just go to your website. Is it a hero for kids or is it just hero for kids.org? No, it's a hero for kids.org. Okay. I wanted to clarify that because I thought it had the A in front of it, but I wasn't 100% positive. Yeah. And then Facebook is the same thing as well, A Hero for Kids. Right, correct. And that goes right to the main Facebook page. And I, I know it, it's uh, we've got the, the two pages that I operate. I operate a, a foundation page. And what the foundation will be eventually as we, we grow is, is just not, not separate from the organization. But we'll we'll focus on more on the working with the other organizations. Uh, so the the Hero for Kids itself will will work with you know the police and the fire and the veterans and the children and the schools, and then the foundation will work with other nonprofits. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. I that's very good uh, foresight on your part to to think ahead because. Your organization is growing and will grow to be an extremely large success in the Orange County area because because of you. I mean, you you have a true heart, and I think a lot of Americans are going to say, hey, I want to do my part as well. And I think you're an inspiration, and I think a lot of people will see that, especially if they meet you, especially if they hear this show, they'll hear from your voice that you know, that's not you're just not talking. You know, you're doing you're doing the work. You're walking the walk. Yeah, I am. I am honestly blessed to. I mean, I'm. I'm following my heart and my passion. You know, my my heart is in in. You know, goes out to to folks that that are in need, that are honestly in need, and then my passion is uh, 
children, veterans, and first responders. I mean, you know, the, the folks that, that go out there and, and, and run in to help people that they don't even know, you know, and, and my, you know, just my greatest gratitude. I words, you know, I read that, that you posted Frank on Facebook, uh, and I was like, man, I just don't have words to, to explain what I feel. You know, I, I'm honored and humbled are the two words that, that come to mind and the, the feeling that I feel when I'm out at these events and these community events with, uh, like Orange County, Sheriff Mina uh, had an amazing uh, community barbecue out there in uh, East Orlando yesterday. And I was just, you know, just so honored and so humbled to be a part of that, to, to have been invited and, and to join his deputies and, and to see their, their love of the community and their passion to, to give back and meet those kids and meet the families. It's just, you know, words escape me sometimes and I, I get passionate, you know, when I start talking about it, but, but just humble, amazing what, what law enforcement officers do and first responders, firefighters, medics, and, and that it's just, you know, what, what leads somebody to go running into that burning building or, or somebody to run to the sound of gunfire rather than away from it and to, to help people that you don't even know risk your lives for people that you don't even know. It just, it just humbles me. Uh, yeah. Words, words escape me. So do you have any events that you want to talk about coming up for your organization? Well, uh, we are, well, that, that's great. We are participating this weekend, the uh, St. Cloud Rotary, the Spring Fling. Uh, Batman's going to be out there Saturday and Sunday, and we'll be uh, helping to collect funds and, and uh, for the St. Cloud Rotary Scholarship Fund which gives uh, back to uh, children that uh, otherwise might not be able to go to, you know, continue their education. Then uh, April 16th, we, we're going to participate with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office in the Law Enforcement Torch Run, and it's going to be the Law Enforcement Torch Walk for Batman, but they've assured <laughs> me walking is okay. Uh, and then uh, April 27th, uh, we're Part of, we're again with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office with the Relay for Life. And then, uh, of course, you know, we have the in, in May, uh, we've got the Law Dogs Bicycle Scholarship Challenge, which I'm um, um, just blessed to have been invited to. And uh, in June, we're going to be a community rainbow run out in uh, Orlando. And uh, that is part of the um, a community event that's going to attract thousands of folks to a 5K out there. So, and then there's a, a lot of literacy events filled in there with schools. We were actually nominated, and we're going to go next week to a breakfast as the uh, business partner of the year with uh, uh, Osceola County School District. Uh, oh, fantastic! Congratulations, Congratulations yeah. on that. That's that well, shows. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm just honored to be nominated. I'm. I don't even care whether, quite frankly, whether we win or not. I'm. I, we'd be an awesome ca company if we did win. But you know, it's just to be nominated and be at that breakfast with a, a group of a bunch of folks that give back to the school. I think that's fantastic. Obviously, people see what you're doing and it doesn't go unnoticed. But again, if you're in the Orlando area and you want to contribute or volunteer your time, get a, get a hold of a Hero for Kids Foundation and a Hero for Kids because they're doing really amazing work and they can help us put our country back on track. So don't hesitate to give them a donation or get involved and do your part to bring the United back to the United States with an amazing organization that our, our founder here, John Kalish is heading up and you don't want to lose sight of, it. he's an amazing leader. And if you want to be a part of a great organization, this is one to, to jump on board with for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. 
to all our millions of listeners for this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that uh, you can contact the Her- A Hero for Kids Foundation via the website, which is aheroforkids.org, or the same on Facebook. Do you have a YouTube page, John? No, no I do not. No. Nope. Okay. I'm I'm just not pretty enough to do videos. <laughs> well, we we try to do videos. Uh, we've we've gotten a little better over time, and we're getting better every day. But uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, you have to. I gotta give uh, whoever makes these wonderful videos that we watch on TV and in other you know other videos all the time a lot of credit because it's very time consuming. It's it's very painful sometimes. <laughs> it's like to sit there and try to cut all this video and put, you know, the, the voiceovers with it and music with it and cutting it all perfect. It just, it's very time consuming. You got to sit down in front of a computer for hours, but, uh, Oh, I know. Yeah. But anyway, so a hero for kids.org. That's the place to go. If you want to contact adopt a cop USA, we're on Facebook and YouTube at adopt a cop USA official site. Remember the official site. And our website is myaacusa.org, and that's myaacusa.org, not Mayakusa, which some people, <laughs> some people have approached us and like, what is Mayakusa? <laughs> like, oh my Mayakusa. Goodness. Yeah, I guess it kind of looks like Mayakusa, and, and somebody asked us about that, so it's kind of funny. But <laughs> take it away, Frank. Well, again, thank you so much, John Kalish, for coming on board our show tonight. Please like and share this program so that he can get more support with all his amazing people that that work really hard behind the scenes to make it a success. And if there's anything that we can do, we will do everything in our powers to help move your program forward, to share the word about this amazing organization. So thank you so much, John, for joining us tonight. And Bird Dog, for everything that you do behind the scenes. And I know um, it's a lot of work just dealing with me regardless of trying to put videos together in these shows. So we really appreciate everything you do behind the scenes. Cause if it weren't for the bird dog, we'd be in big trouble. So thank you so much for all that. Anytime, anytime. I enjoy it. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you guys out there because if we all work together, everything is possible. Nothing good about going selling drugs. The money don't mean nothing when you're harming everyone. And you can get killed bringing pain to your mom. Take a legal substance and you can OD. Overdose from nasty chemicals in the streets. Live a happy life, you gotta keep your hands.